Welcome to the Chapter 8 Review Sheet. I'll be your host, Mr. C. All right. First one, solving by factoring. So remember, our checklist, GCF first. Then you're either doing perfect squares or you are going to do uh, your diamond and either doing uh, trinomial or we're doing the box. So here we look for a GCF. There's no numbers. There's no uh, letters in common. So there is no GCF. We're going to bust out the diamond because there's three terms. So 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. That adds to 1. And then the factors we would use are either 6 and 1, which does not work, or we're doing 3. So 3. And if we do negative 3 and 2, we're going to get a negative 1. So the sign is off. So we want negative 2 and positive 3. So my factors are going to be x minus 2 times x plus 3. Actually, this is a common mistake, okay? Because when I multiply, x times x gives me x squared, not 2x squared. So this is not going to work. So what we need to realize is there's a 2 in front here, okay? So what we want to do instead is we need to use our box. So we're going to drop the box in here. The first term we see is 2x squared, so that goes in the first box. The last term is negative 3. And then we're filling in the negative 2 x and the positive 3x. And so we're going to do our GCFs from left to right. So 2x squared and 2x have a positive 2x in common. 3 and negative 3 have a positive uh, 3 in common. So this is 2x plus 3. 2x squared and 3x have an x in common. And then 2 and negative 3 don't have anything in common but a 1. And since this starts out with a negative, we have a negative one here. So our two factors are going to be 2x minus 3 and then x minus 1. At 2x plus 3, sorry. Okay. So now we're going to set each of them equal to 0. So if 2x plus 3 is equal to 0, we're going to move that 3 over to the other side by subtracting it. So 2x is going to equal to negative 3. And then we're going to divide by 2. And we get negative 3 over 2. So this is actually negative 1.5. Okay. And then we have x minus 1 is equal to 0. So we add 1 to both sides to get x is equal to 1. Of course, this is an or in here. Okay. So our two answers are negative 1.5 or 1. And there's our set notation. Okay. Problem number 2, letter B here, I should say, 1B. So same thing for factoring. So uh, we have this square term, so we want to multiply that out. Remember, squared means times itself, so it's not going to distribute and become y squared minus 3 squared or y squared minus 9. So it's really y minus 3 times y minus 3, and then we're going to bring this 4y minus 12 along for the ride here. So we distribute. So we take the first term, the y, and we're going to distribute through, okay? And then we're going to take the negative 3, and we're going to distribute that through. So y times y is y squared. Negative 3 times negative uh, y times negative 3 is minus negative 3y. Negative 3 times y is another negative 3y. And then 3 times 3 is positive 9. And we still have this 4y minus 12 here. We have to get it equal to 0. So we're going to bring the 4y over and the 12 by subtracting the 4y. And actually, I'm going to hold off on that step for a minute. So what I'm going to do next it's combined like terms on the left here. Okay, so y squared stays y squared. The minus 3 and the minus 3 becomes negative 6y plus 9. And now I'll move the 4y over. So subtracting 4y from both sides, adding 12 to the 9, and I'm going to get y squared minus 10y plus 21 is equal to 0. So no GCF, do my diamond, I want to multiply to 21, add a subtract to give me negative 10. So 21 is either 21 and 1, which does not work, or 3 and 7. And we can get 3 and 7 to work by doing two negatives to give us negative 10. So we get y minus 3 times y minus 7 equal to 0, that's our factored form. And then when we set each of these equal to 0, we're going to get answers of 3, okay? Or if y minus 7 equals 0, 
We're going to an answer of seven. That's an accident. That's all right. And there's our two answers here. Okay. Second part here is completing the square. So for completing the square, remember we're doing the b over 2 squared here. So take a look at the first term. If you can't remember what to do at this part, what to add to both sides, if that's something to kind of keep in mind. So uh, I'll show you that step. So we're going to do b over 2 squared. So remember, this is supposed to be ax squared plus bx plus c. So the first number in front of the x squared is a, which here would be a 1. b is negative 6. So we're going to do b over 2 squared. So negative 6 over 2 squared is actually negative 3 squared. But that number is important. And we get 9. So I want to turn the negative 12 into a 9. So if I can't figure out what that is, or if I'm just not sure, the easy one thing you can do is move the 12 to the other side. So just get the x's over here. Okay, so x squared minus 6x is equal to 12. And now I'm going to put a 9 in here to complete the square. I'm going to add 9 in, and I get x squared, after I'm done with this, honey, thank you, they can just hear you, okay, thanks, Kate, now this negative 3 that we had in here, okay, is going to become in the factored form here, so it's going to be x minus 3 squared equals 21, we're going to take the square root of both sides, remember, whenever you physically put in a square root, remember the plus minus, okay, and so we get x minus 3 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 21. This already is in simplest radical form. So we just add 3 to both sides. And we get x is equal to 3 plus or minus the square root of 21. And that is our answer here. All right. The next question, we got part B. So same thing. So I'm going to move this 33 over to the other side first. I'm going to add it over. So we just get the variables on one side. So x squared plus 8x is equal to 33. I'm going to do the b over 2 squared. So b is 8 over 2 squared is really 4 squared, which is 16. So I'm going to add 16 to both sides to complete the square. Now, if you were just going to change the 43 or the negative 33 you want it to become 16, then you're going to add that 49 to both sides here. So if we want it to turn into x squared plus 8x, plus 16 is equal to 49. This is going to factor into x, remember this 4 from before, plus 4 squared equals 49. We'll take the square root of both sides. Remember our plus minus, okay? So we get x plus 4 is equal to plus or minus, and this becomes 7 when we take the square root. So I'm going to track, subtract 4, and I'm going to get my two answers. So x is equal to negative 4 plus or minus 7. So our first answer is x is equal to negative 4 minus 7, which is equal to negative 11. And our second answer is it equal to x is equal to negative 4 plus 7, which is equal to 3. So our two answers are negative 11 or positive 3. All right, and then quadratic formula, you'll have this on the exam, on the test. Remember, it's x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Remember the standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c. So a here is the coefficient in front, so that's 1. b is positive 4, and c is negative 16. All right, so we're going to plug in. So x is equal to, and I'm using parentheses here, this get, in case I have a double negative. So we have x is equal to negative. We plug in 4. Kind of looks like a 9, though. So I'm going to just undo and change that. Maybe I'll undo and change it. Technical difficulties, people. So, uh, when you plug that in, so negative of 4, there we go, plus or minus, and then I'm going to do, once again, parentheses. In case it's a negative, we want to make sure we always get a positive answer here. So, it's 4 squared, okay, minus 4 
times 1, and then times negative 16. So whenever A or C is negative, right, when we get this, remember this is going to get a positive answer, going to add. So keep track of that. And then 2 times 1. So X is equal to negative 4, plus or minus. Now at this point, I'm going to grab the calculator, okay? Grab a new document. And I'm just going to type in, okay, the 4 squared minus 4 times 1 times 16 here. So 4 squared, right, times 4, right, times 1 times negative 16. All right, hit A, A, enter. Oh, what did we forget? Oh, I remember. This is supposed to be minus 4 squared. So negative B squared minus 4AC, and we get 80. All right, so I know that this becomes the square root of 80 over 2. And now we're going to simplify. So remember, the square root of 80, okay, we're going to break down 80. So 80 would become essentially 2 and 40, okay? 40 is going to become 2 and 20. This is going to become 2 and 10, and then 2 and 5. So essentially we're going to get four twos and a five. So 2, 2, 2, 2, and a 5. We're going to circle our sets. So each set of two doubles this becomes a set. So these two twos, remember, Okay, the twins broke out of jail, but only one survived, right? So we bring one two out and one two out here. So two times two in front, a five left inside, and this becomes four radical five here. All right, so I'm going to switch where it says radical 80, and I'm going to write negative four plus or minus four square root of five. So at this point, to simplify, I'm going to break up my fraction. Right, the denominator is going to stay underneath both, and then I'm going to divide the four here with the two, okay, and then the other four with the two. So x is eventually going to turn into negative two here, plus or minus, and then this four and two you can divide out, okay, then that's going to become two square root of five. And there's our answer for page one. All right, on to page two. Okay, school building, rectangular soccer field. So we got a rectangular soccer field here. Okay. Uh, must be 40 yards longer than its width. So if we consider this the width, then the length is equal to the width plus 40. Okay, so W is the width. Remember, we want to get in the house, we need a key here. There's our length, all right? And then the area is equal to length times width. So 6,000 is equal to W times W plus 40, okay? Remember more than or less than goes at the end. We're gonna distribute. So 6,000 is equal to W squared plus 40W. And at this point, I kind of said to myself, I am not sure how this is going to factor when it adds to 40 and multiplies to 6,000. So what I did with here was complete the square. So I did 40 over 2, remember b over 2 squared. This is essentially equal to 20 squared, which is equal to 400, okay? So I'm going to add 400 to both sides, all right? which gives me 6,400, and this becomes W squared plus 40W plus 400. And remember we talked about before, this 20 becomes essential in our factored form. So this is W plus 20 squared, and that's equal to 6,400. Take the square root of both sides. Remember the plus minus, okay? And this becomes plus or minus 80 square to 6400 and this is w plus 20. so we subtract 20 from both sides and we're going to get our two answers okay so our first answer first possibility is going to be negative 20 plus 20 
plus 80, okay, which is 60, or the second answer is negative 20 minus 80, okay, which is negative 100. And this doesn't make any sense. I can't have a negative length, so I know my answer has to be 60, okay? So we can put down the dimensions for ourselves here. Wait for the text to kick in here. We plug back in, so the width would be 60. All right, and then we add 40 to that, we're gonna get a length which is 100. So we plug back into the key here. All right. And there you go. All right, dropping down to the next one, a rectangular garden here, okay? So what we wanna do for this one is we wanna figure out um, when we read it, it gives us this number of 396 square meters. And this is the garden and the walkway together. So we know the area, okay, of this whole thing is 396, but that includes this whole side and this whole side, okay? I did not. So it's 12 to here, okay, 12 to here, and then we're adding on an X and an X, so this is essentially 12 plus 2X, okay? This side over here is essentially 16 from here to here, and we're adding on another X and X, so this is 16 plus 2X. So that's our width and that's our length, okay? And then we wanna do the area. So we know that area is equal to length times width, okay? This is the width. Uh, we're about to get, this is the length. So 396, so this is 12 plus 2x, and this is 16 plus 2x. Why don't you watch your show and you can go get a cookie? So we're gonna distribute. So one thing we don't know is 16 times 12, which is 192. So we're gonna distribute. So 12 times 16 is 192. 12 times 2x all the way down is 24x. The 2x to the 16 gives us 32x. And then 2x times 2x is 4x squared. Okay, so I'm gonna get, as soon as I see that x squared, I know I wanna get everything on the same side here, okay? So I'm gonna subtract the 396. Soon, honey. And I'm gonna combine like terms and write it in order. the doorbell again. At our house? No, don't ring the doorbell. At their house? No, please do not. Don't do it anymore. We add like terms here, which is 56. Okay, and then we're doing 192 minus 396, which is negative 204, so minus 204. Now, first thing I'm going to do when I'm going to try to factor here is do a GCF. And I'm going to divide everything by the GCF. So 204, 56, and 4 all have a 4 in common. So I'm going to factor, I'm going to divide out this 4, and that's going to leave me with x squared, plus, this is going to go in here 1, 14 times, and then 204 divided by 4 is going to be 51. So I know I'm using my diamond, I know it's got to multiply to 51, and add or subtract to give me 14. So I'm going to go through my head, I know it's 1 and 51, 2 doesn't go into an odd number, so does 51, is that divisible by 3? So 51 divided by 3, and it is. And there's 3 here, okay? And then 17, those are my two factors. And look at that, they do give me 41. So this is going to be 17 positive, 
and negative 3, and then I know what my factors are. So it's going to be parentheses, x plus 17, and x minus 3. There's my factored form. Set each one equal to 0. And then we solve. So x is equal to negative 17, which is not an answer. Or x is equal to 3, which can be our answer. So we reject this answer, okay, because we either can't have a negative length. So there we go. And then we want to state the width of our rectangle. So that's 12 plus 2 times 3, which is 12 plus 6, and that's 18. And this is in meters, so 18 meters. There's page 2, okay, on to page 3. Nope, I don't want that. I think we got to go back to go forward, apparently. You're going to have to wait. When they're home. All right, while we're waiting for my computer to uh, be better, we're going back a page first. Can I do it? Nope, not right now. When I'm done, you can do it, okay? I can tell you computer. All right, moment. so page three, we do another factoring question here. So a football player attempts to kick a football through the football goal. Okay, this is important. So we're going to take this. I know i got to graph it. This is my interval. And remember, as soon as I see the interval, I remember there's no arrowheads on my graph. I stop and start at 0 and 150, wherever that is on the x and y. Okay? So I'm going to take my calculator. I'm going to plug in that equation. So I'm going to open up a new document. No, I don't want to save. I want to graph. So it's going to be... Okay, so it's negative 1 over 255 x squared plus, and we got 2 thirds x. And I'm just going to double check to make sure I type it in right. Okay, hit graph, and at first it looks like a line, right? It looks like a straight line, but we're only seeing part of the window. Remember, I'm supposed to graph from 0. All the way to 150. So I know that I need to zoom out to see this graph. So I'm going to press menu. I'm going to go to zoom and then choice four is out. So center, so I'm just going to center right at the origin and I'm going to click the button here. So I'm going to go right over to my calculator and I'm going to click. And it's going to click out and it's going to zoom out again. And then I'm going to click it again. Oh, we don't want to do that. Don't move your line. Again, again. And you can see as I'm zooming out, I'm starting to see more of the curve. And there's my curve. So right now my window, if you notice the window, is at positive 246.98. So it's almost at 250. Okay, so my window is pretty big. There's my equation. And now what I want to do is I want to graph. I really want to figure out what this vertex is. And I also want to know where it hits the graph here. Okay. Put it back. Okay, so I go to menu. I'm going to analyze graph, and the first thing we're going to notice is that we have a maximum here. So I stretch my window over, and there's my maximum. Okay, and I'm going to move this over here. So we're going to make a table, okay? So you know the vertex goes in the middle? So the vertex is at 85, and then 28.3. Okay, what I'm going to do is essentially look for any other nice points. So I know I have to start at zero. So I go to my table, control T, okay, and I got to go to zero and see that the, when I'm at zero, it's zero, okay? This is zero, zero. 
And then I'm going to kind of scroll down to just see if there's any other nicer points to grab. Oh, there we go. 17 and then 10.2. 17, 10.2. And maybe we'll do one more. So let's scroll on and we find another one. And we got one at 51 and 51 and 23.8. Okay, so after 85, which we know where that goes, we'll keep scrolling down that we find a nice point here. So 119 is the next one. And that should also have another nice point, and there's 23.8 again. There was another point that I passed. I'm not going to graph it. You can see back here, 102 has one. Okay, remember we want it to be symmetrical, so we're going to pick the same points. And then I'm going to scroll down until I find that 10.2 again, which is at 153. And actually, I can't even do 153. I can only do 150. So at 150, it's 11.76 seven six four seven all right seven six four seven okay so now what i'm going to do is essentially look at graphing these points now i have to do um my graph here so the, this axis the y-axis right is essentially the height so that's our height okay and then this one is our distance we kick the ball, however far out it is, that's how uh, tall it's going to be here. So we're going to go graph those points for ourselves here. All right. So I started 0, 0. Oh, I need a scale. Look at that. So how how far does it have to go? It has to go to 150. So what can we count by? Can we count by 10s, 5s? So if we, count by, if we count by 5s, we start at 0 here, right? And then we're going to make this a small one again. Okay. And then I count by, let's say five. So five, here's 10, 15, here's 20, right? 25, here's 30, there's 40, 50, 60, 70, and we'll be able to fit it. 80, 90, there's 100, there's 110, 120, 130 look at that just fits not bad now we only have to get up to 28.5 that's the biggest y coordinate right there okay so we only have to get up to 28.5 it's actually 28.3 i believe it is so we need really need if we count by let's see if we count by two so two there's four six there's eight ten twelve fourteen sixteen eighteen twenty 22, 24, 26, 28, there's 30, 32. So we got enough. Okay, so we're going to go graph our points here. So the first point happens at 0, 0. We'll put a point at 0, 0. 17, which is just after 16 here, and 10.2. So there's 10.2, so it's just a little bit above and a little bit to the right of that first box. So kind of like right there. We got 51, so just past 50, and 23.8, so there's 22, 20, it's almost at 24, so it's just about, right about there, okay, so just shy of 24, and it doesn't have to be super exact, but you want to be pretty close. I'm also using a stylus on here, so it, it doesn't put it right where I want it. If I was using a pencil, it would be a little bit easier to get here. Um, I also noticed that my last dot is at just after 10, and it should be just after 15. So 15, 17, and 10.2. So it should be right about, we'll say there. Okay, so 51, we said we're at 23.8, which is almost at 24. So somewhere up here. Okay, and then we're at 85. That's right in the middle, straight up, and 28.5, 0.3, so it's a little shy, a quarter of the way up. Probably a little bit higher than that, though. Right about there. All right? And then we're going back down. So 119 is just shy of 120, and we are at 23.8 again. OK. 
Okay. So 120. Just shy of that. So somewhere right in there. Okay. And then at 150, we're at 11.76. So we're just shy of 12. And right about there. All right. Perfect. And now all I have to do is draw a curve that goes to those points. So I curve. What I might do is kind of stop here and start on the other side and curve up. Now that I would lose a point on because right here I've gone above where I'm supposed to. So do this part in pencil if you got it. Okay. There you go. There's my curve. Now I'm not extending past like I'm not doing arrowheads because that would lose a point. So it stops right there. All right. Um, and then I'll do my equation because just in case, uh, negative 1 over 255 x squared plus 2 thirds x. All right. There's my graph. And now we can go through and we can talk about the different things. So we know the vertex, right? It's 885 and 28.23.8, right? No, 28.3. All right. Interpret the meaning of the vertex so that we want to talk about the vertex. Did you, did you already have some? No. Then you can. Okay. So what does the 85 stand for? It's the distance. Okay. So the vertex tells us that when the ball is kicked 85 feet, right, or yards, no, it's feet, okay, it will be at its highest point, that's the vertex, right, which is 28.3 feet off the ground. Anything about kicking 85 feet and being 28.3 feet off the ground. That's what we need from there. Okay, part D. The goalpost is 10 feet high and 45 yards away. So if the goalpost is 45 yards away, okay, and it's 10 feet high, you got to think for a minute in terms of the graph, right? Oh, come back. 10 feet high and 45 yards away. So here's 45 yards. And it's 10 feet high. So this is the height of the of the uh, the goalpost right there. Okay. So is it going to clear essentially our goalpost at 10 feet? All right. So what we really want to know is if I plug 45. Okay. And for x, right? H of 45. I want to know is it greater than 10? If it is. We'll make it, we'll pass over the goalpost. If not, okay, then it's not going to. So when I plug in, okay, take my equation. So h of 45 equals negative 1 over 255 times 45 squared plus 2 thirds times 45. Now, I have no clue how to do this in my head. We're taking the calculator, okay? Now, at this point, we can open up the scratch pad, okay? Um, don't use this if you're doing Sokotoa. Well, we have to do it this year, so you should be good. Okay, so we're going to do fraction, front, negative 1 over 255, and then parentheses, we do 45 squared, and then plus 2. Grim on the fraction, thirds times 45, hit enter. Ooh, I don't really know what that is. I'm going to bring it back. Instead of hitting enter this time, I'm going to hit control enter for approximately. And there we go. So it's 22.0588. Okay. So H of 45 equals 22.0588. So the answer is, if we kick it, will it work? We want to justify. We're going to say yes. Okay. After 45 feet, 
the ball is approximately okay 22 feet in the air and we're good to go okay so the zeros next question the zeros of a quadratic function f are negative 3 and 5 what's the equation of the axis of symmetry so if we want to work backwards we want to think about it in terms of f of x right and if this is true what's right before this so if x is equal to negative 3 right and x is equal to 5 or x is equal to 5 if those are my roots what would come right before this so what i'll actually do is move those down to the bottom like if we're solving right they would normally be up here they would be down low okay so if x is equal to negative 3 or x is equal to 5 right right before it i would want to move the 3 over to the other side so this would be x plus 3 equal to 0 and the same thing with the 5 this would be x minus 5 equals 0 so this would be our our zero product property and then it would go back to our factored form right and if we distribute this right we'll get x squared right minus 5x plus 3x and then minus 15. so combine like terms here and my function is x squared minus 2x minus 15. So the axis of symmetry, remember, has an equation that's x equals negative b over 2a. All right, we know a is 1 and b is negative 2. So we know this is negative, negative 2, okay, over 2 times 1, which is really positive 2 over 2, which means it's x equals 1. Also, keep in mind that if we have a graph here, okay, and we're at negative 3 and 5 and this is where kind of my roots are hitting all right terribly drawn the axis of symmetry has to be right in the middle here right so what's in the middle of negative 3 and positive 5 because that's our answer okay so somewhere between negative 3 and positive 5. If we go down, right? We get right in the middle. And that is the axis of symmetry equation, okay? All right, number 8. If this is true, there's our two equations. So what value of x is f of x equal to g of x? So what I want to do is set these two things equal to each other. So if I set x squared minus 2x minus 8 equal to okay hi hi kate you think i'm your student i know you are <laughs> uh set it equal to one fourth x minus one and as soon as we notice that it's a quadratic equation i washed my hands when thank i got great to job other one other one mommy already on. gave me um some ice cream oh that's nice of mommy there's my donkey yeah, well, you get changed when you get that again. I know, right. Equal to, and instead of one-fourth, we'll pretend it's 2.25x minus 1. So we're going to move all this stuff over to this side, okay? So we're going to track the 0.25x and add 1. So plus 0.25x and add 1. And I get x squared. Oh, look at it. I put plus, and this is supposed to be minus, okay? So x squared minus 2.25x minus 7 equal to 0. Now, I have no clue how this is going to factor, or even if it does. I'm also noticing over here that a lot of these have decimal answers, so it probably will not factor. So at this point, I'm going to use quadratic formula. So a equals 1, b equals negative 0.25. And then c is equal to negative 7. Okay, so I bust out my quadratic formula. So remember, negative b, so negative of negative 2.25, negative b, plus or minus the square root, b squared is negative 2.25, 
use the parentheses so that we get the positive answer minus 4 times a which is 1 times c which is negative 7 okay all over 2 times 1 and don't forget the variable this is x equals okay so this is positive 2.25 plus or minus and now I'm going to type all that fun stuff okay that we got right there in my calculator so I do parentheses okay negative 2.25 squared minus 4 times 1 times and we got negative 7 and we get 33.0625 33.0625 all over 2 so we have two answers at this point 1 plus 1 minus so x is equal to 2.25 plus that lovely radical 33.0625 over 2 or right x is equal to 2.25 minus that radical 30 point all over 2 0 6 2 5 so I'm going to take my calculator okay and we're going to do 2.25 minus my radical and all I'm going to do is go up and grab and bring it down so the radical right and then we're going to do parentheses fraction bar over 2 and there's the first answer so x is equal to negative 1.75 or what I'm going to do is go up and grab the last thing I did hit enter to bring it down and we're going to go delete the minus and change the plus and we get 4 all right and so we know that our answer is negative 1.75 4 and there we go Okay, last page. It's getting kind of late. All right, we're gonna graph both of these. So let's do the let's do g of x first. Okay, so for g of x, okay, the slope is two, the y-intercept is negative four. So we're going to go down four. Well, maybe they'll be home in a little while. It's always tomorrow, kid. Nope. And our slope is two. So I'm going to go up two and over one. And when we say two, remember we mean rise over run. So this is really two over one. So that's why we're going up two. And then one to the right, positive and a positive, okay? And I'm going to get these points right here. Or I can go down two and one to the left, so it's a negative and negative. And then I'm going to go ahead and make my graph, okay? So, no to you. Okay. When I'm done, I'm still working on this. I'm almost done, okay? And this, of course, is g of x. g of x equals 2x minus 4. All right, the second we're going to do is we're going to do f of x. And remember, we're going to use our calculator here, okay? So, control the key to the table, and I'm just going to start a new one. I don't even want to have to deal with Oh, don't want that. New documents. Don't want to save. Give me a graph. This is negative 2x squared. Okay. And I want to take a look. If we need to, we can identify the maximum value here. Remember, this is a frowning face. It's concave down. And we can see a 0, 0. So on my table, 
put a zero in the middle, okay, and I get my points. So here is uh, f of x, so my xy table, so zero, oh, that's in the middle, so zero, zero, negative one and negative two, one and two, so we're negative eight, negative two, zero, negative two, and negative eight. So I'm gonna go graph those points. Remember, always graph in the vertex. So negative two, negative eight. Oh, that's one of the points that's already there. Negative one, negative two. I'll try to get it right on it. Zero, zero. Zero, zero. One, negative two, there's another common point. Okay, and then two, negative eight. And so I'm gonna draw my curve in. Ella, can you turn that down, please? Turn it down. What you're listening to. And f of x equals x. Uh, thank you for turning it down. Negative 2x squared. All right. So what do they have in common? Make sure we label the equations. We have our, our axes already labeled. We don't need to worry about that. And then our points of intersection are negative 1, negative 2. And then we have negative 2, negative 8. All right. So there we need for full credit. And if you want to put them over here, you can. Okay. So negative 1, negative 2, and then negative 2, negative 8. And you guys get to listen to dance class. All right. Second one, number 10, Abigail is younger than Gina. This is important. Abigail is younger than Gina. Gina's age is X. So if X is equal to Gina, okay, and they're consecutive integers, that means to get from one to the other, which is add one. Or in this case, since Gina is young, then if Abigail is younger, okay, That means that this has to be one below this, so it's x minus one, okay? So the difference means we're gonna subtract of the square of Gina's age, so the square of Gina's age, and this is what we're subtracting, okay? Eight times Abigail's age is 17, so the is is the equal sign there. So the square of Gina's age, that's x squared, difference minus eight times abigail's age eight times abigail's age is 17 okay and so which one of these matches that it's x squared times minus 8x minus one and there we go so if you didn't do right uh if you did that gina was older right gina was younger and x plus one you'd end up with three so just be careful with that one okay choice three and so the choice four all right number 18 joe has a rectangular patio that measures 10 by 12 feet he wants to increase the area by 50 percent so the area here remember is already known right as 120 feet so if i want to increase this by 50 percent i'm basically going to take 20 and multiply 120 and multiply it times 1.5 remember b is equal to 1 plus r growth factor right so that's 1 plus 0.5 so our growth factor is 1.5 and this is actually going to give us 180 degrees so if we increase it by 50 percent we take half of it and we add it on to it okay so we're going to increase each dimension by length of x so it means the width okay which was 10 is now going to get increased by x and the length which was 12 is now going to get increased by x so my new equation i just need an equation here okay is the area equals length times width so 180 is equal to you can say the width length 12 plus x times width which is 10 plus x and we can stop that's all we got to do okay for number 12, we're going to complete the square. Now remember, the big problem here is this 2 in front. I can't have any numbers in front of the x squared. So the first thing I'm going to do is divide everything by 2. 
So this is x squared minus 6x plus 3 is equal to 0. And then we're going to complete the square. So I'm going to move that 3 out of there to get x squared minus 6x is equal to negative 3. And then I have to add that b over 2 squared thing. Remember, b over 2 squared. So b is negative 6, which is negative 3 squared. That's 9. So I add 9 to both sides. Okay. And I get x squared minus 6x plus 9 is equal to 6. And then this becomes x minus 3 squared equals 6. And look at that. Choice 1 matches. All right. Thanks for sticking with me through it, guys. Uh, I'll send this out in a second. I'll see you guys tomorrow for part 1. So it's going to be like multiple choice, a couple short answers. And then Friday, we're going to finish up with some more detailed questions. You will have to do one of each, one completing the square, one factoring, one quadratic formula, and then one graphically, okay? Say hi to Kate. Say bye, Kate. Bye.